Well, good day, folks. Welcome back to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, just real quick, I'm going to give you a recipe for a paste bait that I make. Uh, I use this almost exclusively with my pipe sets for raccoons, mink, and sometimes muskrat, but for the most part, it's raccoons and mink. If you haven't seen the video where I use the, the piece of PVC pipe with a 90 degree elbow, uh, I'll try to post it up here somewhere at some point during the video, uh, a link to that one. It's a really great set. If you like to trap in the water and you're looking to take a pile of raccoons uh, and some mink along the way uh, and some muskrat, then you wanna go ahead and check that video out uh, for sure. But today I'm gonna show you the paste bait, the bait that I use uh, in those specific pipe sets. Uh, it's a killer on raccoon. You'll take mink, you'll take the odd muskrat too. So anyway, here we go. Listen, if you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, we sure would appreciate it. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the bell, you'll get notified when we upload new stuff. So uh, before we get started, I've taken a whole whack of criticism over the years about how fast I talk and I don't give an ingredients list and blah, blah, blah. All right, so I'm gonna try something a little new. It's a little something different. So before we get started today uh, with this recipe, here's what you're gonna need if you wanna build it exactly the way that I do. Now, you don't have to. There's all kinds of variations you can do and I'll explain those as I kind of go through the steps. But what you're gonna need is from the good old dollar store, you're gonna need two package of sardines, okay? When you buy your sardines, make sure you get the ones that are packed in oil, uh, not the ones packed in water, okay? Because you want this to be as oily as possible. Water will make it freeze faster and we'll get into that in a little bit. But so you want the ones packed in oil. I use two packs per batch. You're also gonna want one of these pretty significant size cans of mackerel. You're gonna need a can opener for the can of mackerel. You are going to need some flour, just regular household flour. Um, you're gonna need something to stir with. Mixing bowl. Uh, I like to use one of these old fashioned uh, like potato smashers as well. Um, again, that's optional. Um, all of you trappers out there, I know you save all your bacon grease. Every time you guys have bacon, or every time something happens, you know, when you get grease, I know you guys save it. So you're gonna need your old bacon grease container as well. And you're gonna need the absolute cheapest bag or cheapest, you know, bunch of um, oats, like large, like I guess they're called large flake oats, right? So basically oatmeal, <clears throat> okay? Or oats. You're gonna need the smallest, cheapest dollar store, whatever bag of those you can find, okay? All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's go. Uh, keep in mind that it, what you're looking for here is a paste bait. It's a bait that's kind of, not real soupy and it's not too, too thick. It's gotta go in the end of a three quarter inch piece of um, PVC pipe corner, a 90 degree corner, but it's gotta stick there. So you don't want it running down the pipe and you don't want it falling at the end, uh, but you wanna be able to scoop it and use it pretty easily. So we're looking for that, uh, that medium consistency, kind of like a little thicker than toothpaste, but not too much more, okay? So that's what we're kind of shooting for. First thing is you're gonna open up your can of mackerel. Okay, so you want your mackerel can. Hopefully these can openers work. Uh, yep. Right, so open up the can of mackerel. Right, and you're gonna dump that whole thing right into the bowl and get rid of your can. All right, so you got your mackerel in there and it's chunky, right? Like it's big chunks that come out of the can like that. Um, you can squish this up a little bit now, but you don't have to. Next, I open up my sardines. I get all of my sort of meat stuff in first because that shows me or it allows me to know um, just how much of the dry stuff I have to put in. And I'll show you there is a little bit of guesswork to this, but welcome to my world, right? If you've seen any of my videos before, um, some of it is guesswork. So you want all of the oil out of this that you can get, right? So when you open up these sardines, you want the sardines in there for sure but you also want every bit of oil that you can get out of those containers. Okay, so two cans of sardines are going in there. Already, for those of you that trap raccoons, already you can tell that this is like, wow, this is really smelly, and this is really, really gonna easily attract a raccoon. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bulk it up, and we're gonna make it easier to use, okay? So you've got all your fishy stuff in there, okay? Get your mackerel and your things, two things of sardines. Before I go any farther, I'm gonna crush this up and I'm gonna get it as small as possible. Okay, now again, there's no, there's no perfect here. 
It just has to be scrunched up. You want to mix it together. Okay, and, and it's really already like, smells like, you know, smells like it smells, but um, it's already just like this. You could probably, I see some videos, some guys, and they just do that and they put this in a bag, crunch it up, and then, hey, there's raccoon bait. And, and okay, and you're right, it would work. It would work just like this. But for me, this is an impossibility to take out in the field like this and use it um, for what I want to use it for, okay? So there you go, you get all this meat in here. Just like this okay so you get all that fishy stuff in there as much oil as you can get in there is what you want that in there as well okay so you've crushed it all up into as small as you can then you're going to take a good scoop of your used bacon grease now this is the part of the this whole thing that you can't actually go out and buy um if you just a good scoop of, of, of used bacon grease. If you don't have that as a trapper, um, you should have, in my opinion. Um, you should be keeping this out every time you have bacon at your house. You should always keep the grease for all kinds of bait scenarios. Um, but if you don't have it, you can always go out and get some like lard or um, you can actually go get a pound of bacon if you can afford one and uh, basically just cook the whole thing right down. And you can use that, but I like to use I like to use just what we've got. I, I keep all kinds. And my lovely wife uh, makes donuts every now and then. And so about once a year, we get a whole big thing of donut grease. Uh, and it's absolutely amazing for um, this type of stuff. So anyway, you want to squish the bacon grease in there. You want to get it all mushed around good and mixed up really well. Okay. There you go. So you've got that. Now, um, depending on how much water and how much oil was in with the, uh, the sardines and the mackerel, you may want to add just a little bit of water, um, which I didn't say in the ingredients, but you may want to add just a little bit of water um, to help it break up a little bit and to be a little bit thinner at this point in the, in the mixture. Okay, so I didn't add very much there, just enough to make it so it's not too, too dry. Okay. There you go. All right, so that's what you've got. Now, next step, you wanna thicken this up a little bit, but you don't wanna thicken it up like so you can't move it and you don't want it to get hard on you. So what you're gonna do, uh, you're gonna take your flour and you're just gonna start sifting in the flour right on top of what you've got. Okay, so you wanna start sifting that in and mixing it as you go. Okay, so what this flour will do is you'll see as you start to mix this together, it disappears pretty quickly into the mix. It's like, oh, you didn't even put any in there. Okay, so I did the flour like that and it's, it's gone already. But what it did is it actually thickened up the paste a little bit and it's making it into more of a paste than it is just a meat blob, okay? Before I go too much farther into the flour, you want to open up your oats. Okay, and we're gonna add about a cup of oats to our mix, okay? So not a great deal, but about a cup. That's all I really need. This is way more oats than is necessary. And then mix those in as well, okay? So when you mix your oats in, you'll see that this stuff instantly begins to get kind of not solid, but it really, the oats really absorb a lot of the moisture right away, okay? So as you're spinning this around, your mixture gets dry, Okay, and what that does is it, the oats don't do anything except where they hold the moisture. So when we take this out and once we're, all, once we're all said and done here, the oats will really help it to keep that consistency of being moist. Uh, they'll soak up a lot of the liquid and they'll hang on to it, right? So that as you go to use this out on your line, it's still going to be that liquidy, liquidy type paste as opposed to getting all solid, okay? You've added your oats, you've mixed it all around, and now we're just gonna keep, we're just gonna continue to sift in flour, not very much at a time. I only do like maybe a scoop, you know, like a spoonful or so of flour at a time, because if you get too much flour, it'll get too thick. But don't, don't worry about that. So if you're, if you're doing this, you know, and you're building this recipe and you're like, oh man, I used too much flour, now it's way thicker than what I want. Uh, it's a simple matter of 
adding a little bit of like olive oil or a little bit of um, uh, like you can put in uh, sometimes well, any type of oil base. I mean, if you want to put in some glycerin or whatever to, to keep it so that it doesn't freeze, uh, that's always, you know, something you can do too. But I typically just add like an olive oil or like a cooking oil, you know what I mean? Just something um, to thin it back out if I get too much flour in the mix. Now, I've built this paste for, goodness, I've been using this paste for probably five years now or more um, of this particular recipe. And you just kind of get a, you just kind of get a feel for how much flour to put in. And like I said, if you don't get it right the first time, just go ahead and add some type of cooking oil or olive oil to the mix and it'll get thin again. And then you can just add a little more flour. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of a guess and test type method, but it does uh, with a couple of batches and a couple of practices, you'll be all set. So enough yakking. You've basically got now with all of your ingredients together, you've got this, okay? So you've basically got, you see if I can show you this, uh, you've basically got a bait that looks like this. It looks almost like dough. So that's, you're looking for the consistency of basically, like I could pick that up and make a cookie out of it, right? So you wanna be able to scoop that with your glove or with a stick or whatever. You wanna have it sticky enough that it stays on there. Like, see, it just, it doesn't roll off my spoon. It's not thick and liquidy like that, or it's not liquidy enough to like roll off my spoon. It actually sticks there. And so you can jam that. You can put into the end of the pipe set, right? So this entire mixture, I mean, this, this size of mixture, this would do me for, man, it won't do me all season, depending on how many pipe sets I'm running, uh, but it'll do me for a good portion. I mean, this, this mixture right here would bait probably 50 or 60 pipes, um, all said and done, right? So depending on how many you're running and how often you're rebating, like this, and that was only two cans of sardines and one can of mackerel, and then a little bit of other ingredient type stuff. It is important to do the grease part. Um, it will help to waterproof your bait, okay? So the bit of bacon grease that I mixed in there, that really helps so that, because all of my pipe sets are in the water, right? If you watch the video, you'll notice they're all in the water. So they do get some, you know, between rain and water and splashing and whatever else, they do get some wet uh, and that bacon grease will help to waterproof your bait. So anyway, that's it. You're looking for the consistency of like, kind of like dough, um, just, you know, pretty good, just about like that. And you can experiment back and forth with it, but this is an absolutely great bait for those pipe sets for any type of raccoon. Now it doesn't have to be specifically for uh, the pipe sets either. This, you can put this in the bottom of a pail set. You can put this in the bottom of uh, like a live trap bucket thing um, underneath the trap or whatever you want to do. This will bring raccoons for miles and miles. This is super, super fishy. Uh, it's got a super fishy smell uh, and it'll hold its smell for a long time because of all those oils. So anyway, listen, I hope this is something to help you out. And again, if you haven't seen the video on the pipe sets, it's a great one if you're into catching raccoons. Until next time, happy hunting from the Indie Wildman channel.